really energy is the defining issue in disease. Although he officially retired in 2012 at the young age of 88 years old, he was still a prolific writer. And since then, the very, very can actually imitate almost any disease you like to name because basically energy deficiency is the core issue in the disease. He single-handedly spearheaded the concept of high-dose thiamine in clinical practice across the entire Western world. Thiamine is an inherently essential component to mitochondrial function. Of course, it's not the only one, but it has a dominating influence. When in doubt, there's nothing to worry about by taking fat dose of vitamin B1 for virtually anything you, you like to name. It's with great sadness that I announced the death of Dr. Derek Lonsdell, who earlier this month passed away peacefully at the ripe old age of 100 years old. We can take the complexity of biochemistry and we can distill it down to basically simplicity. How can you expect mm -hmm. a poisonous substance to, to do anything towards a disease? First thing that a, the body tries to do with a drug is to break it down and excrete it. Today, we honor the life and legacy of this remarkable doctor who was a pioneering figure in the field of nutritional medicine. He single-handedly spearheaded the concept of high-dose thiamine in clinical practice across the entire Western world. Long time ago, I studied beriberi in detail. Now, you know, beriberi is the classic disease that is caused by thiamine deficiency. And I've found since then that beriberi can actually imitate almost any disease you like to name because basically energy deficiency is the core issue in the disease. We're using the vitamin as a drug and coercing the uh, energy metabolism back into life. He spent more than 60 years trying to raise awareness and educate others on the potential benefits that this nutrient could bring. Really, the palpitations of the heart and the diarrhea alternating with constipation and the abdominal pain and the headaches and the emotional disturbances are all due to the fact that oxidative metabolism in the brain is in poor shape. And when that happens, the brain becomes very, very hyper irritable. And that's so, so that any impulse coming in, like the change of the weather or something like that, can impact in the brain and fire off uh, a, an autonomic nervous system response, which is uh, exaggerated in, in volume. His work has had a profound impact on our understanding of nutritional therapy, in particular vitamin B1, or thiamine and its crucial role in health and disease. He was a maverick, a vocal opponent against the pharmaceutical-based model of medicine, a guy who instead dedicated his entire career and life to understanding and fine-tuning the application of nutrients in the context of medicine and addressing chronic illness. I never give thiamine without magnesium, the vitamins and essential minerals, I really have to be regarded as a team. I give large doses of thiamine and magnesium and then back it up with a well-rounded multivitamin. And from everything that I've learned from Dr. Lonsdale, I think his overall philosophy of health could be distilled into one simple principle, and that's bioenergetics. As over the years have gone on, it's taught me that really energy is the defining issue in disease. And I'm not talking about your ability to jump up and down on a trampoline. Mm -hmm. That's what people think of. When you talk about energy, I've got lots of energy, meaning that they can do a lot of physical things. And I'm talking about the cell, the, mm -hmm. the energy, energy the required cell. by mm -hmm. the cell for it to function. According to Lonsdale, the health of an organism is determined by the availability of usable energy. The general adaptation syndrome, which was the way that the animal defended itself against whatever kind of trauma Cellier was trying to induce on the animal. And the remarkable thing was that he concluded that this 
general adaptation syndrome required huge amounts of energy. Biochemistry is complex as in as complex as anything you can imagine, but out of that, you can discern that there really an engine in the cell which creates the energy, and then there is a transmission which uses the energy. To quote Lonsdale, when asked to look back on his career choices, he says, I have no regrets and have learned repeatedly that the human body heals itself if it has the needed energy. This can only be done by the art and science that surrounds the principles of good nutrition. Because he truly understood this, he rejected the pharmaceutical model of disease and instead opted for a holistic approach which incorporated or which central component was the application of nutrients where the body is in some kind of a disease state. It was my young child patients that taught me that medicine was on the wrong track, Mm -hmm. that you don't treat you don't treat a, a disease with a poisonous substance. How can you expect mm-hmm. a poisonous substance to, to do anything towards a disease? First thing that a, the body tries to do with a drug is to break it down and excrete it. For the past 60 years, he had been shouting from the rooftops, trying to get mainstream medicine to listen. And they didn't. Of course, we know why. We know why they're not interested in nutrition. The FDA... I, I have to say, uh, even though it's probably being said in public, that they're not interested in, in our well-being. They're mm-hmm. interested in uh, the, uh, protecting the, the drug industry. I can safely say that I would not be doing what I'm doing today if it was not for Lonsdale. Although I was never fortunate enough to meet him in person, uh, I'm very thankful that we shared many email communications back and forth. And he would often share his precious insight into different mechanisms and helping me understand the complexity of how thymine might be working. His contribution to nutritional medicine cannot be overstated. And he truly was a pioneer in every meaning of the word. So to commemorate his passing, let's take a minute and just appreciate many of his wonderful achievements throughout his life and the tireless efforts to improve the health of millions across the globe. Born in 1924, Lonsdale went on to complete his medical degree at London University, where he received his MD qualification in 1948. He later went on to specialise in paediatrics and eventually settled at the prestigious Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. And it was while he was at Cleveland Clinic that he began researching vitamin B1. As a paediatrician, he would see many children with a variety of rare conditions ranging from neurological, metabolic and genetic problems which mainstream medicine had no answer for. There were diseases being admitted to the hospital without any, given a name, a diagnostic name, but nobody had the faintest idea what was wrong with them or where the cause was. And I, I started using vitamin B1 on some of these kids just to see what happened. And I found that some of them would improve. The patient with that disease had a very low concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood, but had a high oxygen concentration in the venous blood. So what that meant was that the oxygen wasn't being picked up very well at the lung. It wasn't being transferred to the cell it was passing through the cell and getting into the venous blood without being consumed. In other words, uh, thiamine becomes the arbitrator of a normal oxygen balance and utilization in the cell. He displayed great courage in breaking away from medical establishment dogma, the willingness to actually listen to his patients and the curiosity which encouraged him to try these new alternative therapies. When I started at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation, I was as orthodox as anybody else, but it was my patients that, mm. that led me to believe that we were on the wrong track. And it was this particular patient that was dependent on this particular vitamin for his well-being. He introduced the concept of vitamin dependency. What this basically means is, when someone is not traditionally deficient, but they require sustained high doses to maintain a normal state of health. 
I published the first case of thiamine dependency in a child. Thiamine dependency is different from deficiency. Okay. Thiamine is the fancy name for vitamin B1. Oh, okay. And dependency means that the, uh, the child needs hundreds of times more of the vitamin in order to run the machinery of his body mm -hmm. than, than ordinarily in a, in a, in, 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 in a, in a healthy person. And uh, so I started then on a, a long library research program and clinical research mm -hmm. on uh, vitamin B1, and I'm still working at it. You know, the, the everyday dose, so-called RDA assignment is about 1.5 milligrams. This child had received as much as four or 500 milligrams of thiamine a day in the process of recovery. We knew perfectly well of that ordinary doses. An RDA dose would not work for her. We're using the vitamin as a drug and coercing the uh, energy metabolism back into life. There's no toxicity. I've never seen any toxicity come from the huge doses that I've used. I've even had a patient on as much as seven grams of vitamin B1. And by giving mega doses of that vitamin, we know that we can stimulate energy metabolism and increase the defensive mechanisms of the patient. He was also responsible for coining the term high calorie malnutrition. This basically refers to a state of excess calories causing a depletion of, of micronutrients, so vitamins and minerals. And high calorie malnutrition is referring to this state of imbalance where someone doesn't have enough of these micronutrients to process the energy found in the protein, fat, or carbohydrate. The trouble with the American population is that their diet is so lousy because basically your food has to consist of calories and the vitamins that enable those calories to be oxidized and produce the energy. So there's an imbalance between the high calories and the uh, amount of vitamin that's circulating in the blood of so many people in America. After witnessing the immense potential of using this vitamin in clinical practice, he began communicating with some of the researchers in Japan who had been experimenting with different derivatives, different types of vitamin B1, which could get into the body, were more absorbable and more active. By using vitamin B1 in a special form known as fat-soluble vitamin B1. It's really not fat-soluble, but that doesn't matter. That's a technical issue. It's a fancy way of getting vitamin B1 into the cells where they're required. Now, one of those forms was called TTFD. About mid-century, Japanese investigators were looking at uh, the biochemicals that are uh, in garlic, and they found that there was an enzyme in garlic which acts on thiamine and converts it into a disulfide derivative of the vitamin. And they, found, they thought originally uh, that, that, that it lost its biologic value. But when they used it in animal studies, they found it had a biologic activity which was increased over the biologic activity of the original thiamine from which it had been derived. And they did many, many studies in animals and in human, human studies and showed that it had really extraordinary therapeutic value. For example, they were able to show that if they pre-treated mice with TTFD, which, which is the most modern of the disulfide derivatives, the mice were partially protected from cyanide poisoning. They also found that it could, uh, it, uh, that it could prevent carbon tetrachloride poisoning of the liver. Uh, the, these are amazing experiments which we have ignored. The Japanese went on to study these there are very many different disulfide derivatives, and they found that the tetrahydrofurfural was by far and away the best. His pioneering work with TTFD not only advanced the treatment of thiamine deficiency, 
but also highlighted many important nuances when it came to vitamin therapy in the context of disease. As I've said, Dr. Lonsdale was a prolific author. He published countless scientific articles, but also several books along the way. His book, Thiamine Deficiency Disease, Dysautonomia and High Calorie Malnutrition, was co-authored with Chandler Mars. Now, if you follow my videos, you'll know I've spoken about this at length. I recommend everyone read this book if they want to understand the nuances of thiamine deficiency and how prevalent it really is. But he'd also published three other books in his career. And although he officially retired in 2012 at the young age of 88 years old, he was still a prolific writer. He wrote numerous articles on the website Hormones Matter and on his own blog, Oxygen, The Spark of Life. So even how, after he was retired, he was still uh, responding to patient emails, people who would get in contact, asking questions, people who'd never met him. He would dedicate so much time and effort into educating others. Uh, he, he dedicated his entire life to this, and that is truly remarkable. Just last year, Derek Lonsdale was awarded a place in the Ortho Molecular Hall of Fame, which was so well deserved, and it was about time. To think that he was still publishing scientific articles way into his 90s, the sheer amount of dedication and passion demonstrated by Dr. Derek Lonsdale. Clearly, I, this was his destiny, you know, he was made for this. His work alone has been the ultimate inspiration for myself and I know many, many others around the world. Dr. Lonsdale has passed away, but his legacy lives on through the countless lives he touched and the profound knowledge he left behind. We honor his memory and continue to be inspired by his dedication, wisdom, and unwavering commitment to improving human health. His life and his work continue to inspire and guide us towards a world of better health for all. Rest in peace, Dr. Lonsdale, the man, the legend.